Today we're going to do some science-inspired cookery and to help me I'm joined by Dr Michelle Dickinson. She's a nanotechnologist and if you were lucky enough to catch the Cosmic Shambles live tour in New Zealand and Australia you might have seen her on stage. But at the moment she's here in the UK because of the launch of her new book. So we're off to the kitchen to do some cooking. Things it's the hottest summer we've had in around 40 years, thanks to climate change, we thought that a good experiment to start off with would be making some ice cream. So you promised me we can make some ice cream right here, we don't need any special equipment. Right here, all you need are some strong biceps. Okay. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some cream, crucial ingredient for ice yep. cream. You can use milk. Um, I like cream because it tastes creamier. Um, a little bit of sugar, depending mm -hmm. on how sweet you like it, but also it helps the crystals to start form. So usually about a spoon of sugar because I don't like it too sweet. And then a couple of bags, one with ice in and a, a seal bag. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the cream into this bag and as much as you want, the smaller the amount, the less time it takes to freeze. Because you'll have a bigger surface area exactly. to come in contact with the So I like ice. to do pocket size amounts because number one <laughs> it means I'm not needing too much at a time but secondly it means if you have your friends over you can all make your own flavours. Sounds good and um, you can put anything in there to flavour it? Whatever you want so chocolate sauce or vanilla beans or we're just going to do some sugar just plain simple nice creamy ice cream. We're going to seal this closed taking out the air if possible and we're going to put this into a bag of ice. Now, if you've ever tried to make ice cream as a kid, you would just put cream in a bowl and freeze it. Have you ever done that? Yeah, it doesn't come out very nice. You get kind of crystals, like big lumps of ice in there. Horrible. And that's because cream and milk are a mixture. They're a colloid of water and fats. And so what happens is the water freezes first. Mm -hmm. It makes these big ice crystals. And what you get is a horrible, crystally, horrible textured thing that tastes quite watery. So it effectively comes out of suspension rather than having exactly. little blobs of fat and blobs of water distributed. You yeah. know, big blobs of fat and big blobs of water. It tastes horrible. Not what we want. And we're really sensitive about texture on our tongue. Mm. And so the secret to this is to put it in a bag of ice, but we're going to reduce the freezing point of the ice with some salt. So this is the same idea as putting salt on the roads in winter so that they don't freeze exactly. over. Exactly that. And so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to reduce the freezing point of the ice. And what happens is the ice will melt. And as the ice melts, it draws away the heat from things that are close to it as it melts. And luckily, the cream is close to it. And so okay. it's going to make it freeze a little bit quicker than if you just sat it there. So we're going to pour some salt in as much as possible. We've got tiny <laughs> holes here. We'll see as we can go. About... Well, I usually put a couple of tablespoons in. So let's see how, this is like the tiniest hold salt <laughs> possible. We may be here shaking for a long time. We'll keep going, there we go. So, as much as possible. Now don't worry, your ice cream is not gonna taste salty because you've sealed, sealed it, it into the bag. Yep. And then we're gonna shake. And we're gonna seal this all up and shake it all. And the reason why your ice cream, when you throw it in the freezer normally, if you're just stirring it, um, the crystals start to grow and crystals keep forming and keep forming. Once they've started to nucleate, they will keep growing along their own crystal line. And the challenge with that is big crystals taste horrible mm -hmm. and the texture is horrible. So we're gonna shake this up and as we shake it, it's gonna freeze and the crystals are gonna be broken mashed up. around and broken up. So we'll have as small crystals as possible. Right, let's see if that is. And if you had like a, a proper ice cream maker, that's usually got a beater that's going round and round. Exactly. So that's doing exactly the same thing. It's breaking up yeah. those crystals, giving it lots of different points for new crystals to nucleate on. So you get lots of little crystals rather than big exactly. ones. Exactly. So you want small crystals for texture, makes it mm -hmm. smoother. And you want to mesh it up as much as you can with as much salt in there. So now all you do is you just shake. shake. <laughs> and you shake for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to get some strong arms here. <laughs> Gonna let you shake for a little bit. Okay. It's good to burn the calories together because yeah, you're going to eat some ice work cream. Work up an appetite for your ice cream, and it's nice and cold as well. It's so good in this heat. <laughs> good to do with a friend. Yeah, we take it in turn. <laughs> so you can see the ice is, is all melting. Now. It's melting very quickly. And then every so often, pull it out and see whether it started to solidify. You oh can wow, it has already, a little bit. It's starting to go a little bit. We'll shake it up a little bit more. 
And this is much more difficult to do on a very hot day like today because obviously the temperature gradient is so huge. Um, so more shaking. <laughs> a lot of the experiments in the book involve shaking and I feel like I'm getting very fit from, <laughs> from these recipes. <laughs> so what made you decide to write this book all about kitchen science and food? So I have a lot of parents come to me and they say, hey Michelle, I wish that I could do science with my kids, mm. but I was terrible at science at home and I don't know what to do. And I go onto YouTube and it's all complicated things that I don't know how to use and I'm afraid I don't know the answer. And so I thought about things that they were confident about. And a lot of people know how to read a cookbook mm -hmm. and they know how to follow a recipe. And I've always thought that cooking and science were very similar. Definitely. Yet when you say that to a non-scientist, they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> There's so much science in particularly baking. I mean, getting the measurements precise all and knowing that. what different temperatures are going to do. Yeah. It's, and it's so kind of experimenting. As, as scientists, well. we're confident around experimenting, whereas people who don't have confidence in science, I found that the jargon that we use in science is really intimidating. Mm -hmm. Where there's there's not much jargon in baking, whisk maybe a bit of <laughs> jargon, but it's not too intimidating. So I thought, well, how do I create something that allows people to do science in a format that they already understand, mm. using ingredients that they already have? Because a lot of the things that you Google, you have to go out and buy stuff, and you're like, I don't know what this is, and I don't know where to get it from. And the second you have to go outside, you stop doing yeah. stuff. And I thought, well, how do I make sure that every ingredient is already something that you would have in the house, um, so that you can literally say, I'm going to do science today, we're going to do it right now. Cool. And so that's where it came from. I'm shake a little bit more. <laughs> Woo! Woo! I'm stealing one of them. Just to seal the bag. I think it might be nearly there. I'm really looking forward to my ice cream. It's so hot in here. Oh, my you must be fired. boiling from all that shaking. But I feel like I've burnt enough calories now <laughs> to, to do this. Definitely. And so the longer you shake, obviously, the more solid it will become. And also, if it's not so hot in here, it works yeah. much better in the winter, which is ironic because you don't usually eat ice cream in the winter. <laughs> so I'm going to get some spoons out here. And so. Because it's only a small amount, it will melt very, very quickly. Yeah. But because we didn't make much, I think we can eat it straight out of the bag. Spoon ready. All right, spoon is ready. We're going to leave it on its ice so it doesn't melt a good too idea. quickly. And if you have a look oh, yeah, in there, take a spoon. It's definitely more solid than it was before we started. And I will take a spoon. Definitely tastes like ice cream. That's yummy. It's lovely and smooth. And it's just melted in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 10 minutes of lots of shaking. The kids get mm. lots of exercise. Get to make your own flavours. And that is literally instant ice cream to help us with coming over climate change. <laughs> thanks so much, Michelle. Um, and thanks to you for watching and to our Patreons for supporting us. Without your support, none of these videos would be possible. So if you've enjoyed this and you want to help us make some more, go to patreon.com slash bookshambles for all sorts of exciting rewards. If you'd like to get your hands on one of these beautiful books, you can get it worldwide from the Book Depository. Or if you're in the UK, we recommend going to hive.co.uk and supporting your local bookseller. <laughs>